Today, we're going to look at expensive Magic the Gathering cards, but they're not really that expensive. We're going to start off with actually Tommy's suggestion, the Great Henge. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Now, it's nine mana, green, green, seven generic, insane thing, legendary artifact, but this spell costs X last to cast, where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. You better believe that the deck playing this thing is going to be playing with like five, six, seven power creatures, reduce this thing back to two. Not to mention like you can like, get, I believe you can give creatures some buff somewhere in the middle of the turn. And then, then this thing just costs even less. You tap to add double green and gain two life. And whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on it and draw a card. Super OP card. Anyway, another one that we could talk about is Dig Through Time. This would be one of my ideas. Blue, blue, six generic. We got an eight mana. Basically, like it's, I guess it's like a super impulse of some sort. Uh, look at the top seven cards of your library. Put two of them into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. Completely broken. Uh, I, I mean, you basically look for the top two cards that you need. Oh, and it's at instant speed, doesn't even cost you that much, but because it has delve, it doesn't cost you eight mana, it costs you two mana. Do you know how easy it is to put things in the graveyard? Have you heard of the fetch lands? Some people wondering, why are fetch lands so expensive? Because you just dump it directly into your graveyard to fuel this sort of crap. You know, putting, yeah, putting land type in graveyard, that's OP, that's, sometimes that's broken. Uh, anyway, that dig through time, really a two mana card. Oh yeah, you suggest the same thing, King Ginger. Okay, right, we got Omeek with Murktide Regent. This is probably gonna be a show of like a bunch of Delve and Convoke creatures. Okay, the obvious Delve cre Delve cards period are obviously not expensive enough. Murktide Regent, blue blue five generic for a three three dragon. Probably now the most powerful dragon in the history of the er, like in Magic the Gathering. Sees play in like every format that it can. Uh, it, uh, it's got flying, and when it enters a battlefield, you get a plus one plus one counter on it for each instant and sorcery card exiled it because it has delve. So if you have five or more cards in your graveyard, you're not paying seven mana for this thing like all the other dragons. All the other dragons are jealous of the Murktide region because you can pay this for only two mana. Single two mana, blue, blue. And whenever an instant or sorcery card leaves your graveyard, put a counter on Murktide region. So, I mean, the fun doesn't end. You get this Murktide in play, start exiling more stuff from your graveyard, and it gets even bigger. It's just beyond stupid. King Ginger with the super chat. Ancient Imperiosar. Sounds like some sort of Harry Potter uh, spell. Ancient Imperiosar. Imperios... Periosaur is a dinosaur. All right, we got a green green five generic for a six six dinosaur with Convoke. Trample and Ward 2. Why does this dinosaur get Ward 2 and nothing else can? Ancient Imperiosaur enters the battlefield with two plus one plus one counters on it for each creature that convoked it. So you want to convoke it. So convoke is tap your creatures to help cast the spell. You can tap green creatures to help pay the green cost. It's actually possible that you will not spend a shred of mana casting this this dinosaur. The six six could come into play for nothing. You got two green. You got two green mana dorks and a bunch of tokens. Here's my dinosaur. I present you a dinosaur. Uh, no. <laughs> also every affinity. That's right. Every affinity card ever printed. Uh, we'll go with Abe's Shadow of Mortality. I don't remember this card. Shadow of Mortality. Oh, good God. So it's green. It's black, black, 13 mana. That's 15 mana. That's outright insane. Uh, it's an avatar, 7, 7 avatar. If your life total is less than your starting life total, this spell costs X less to cast, where X is the difference. Ah, uh, yes, that was like, that was supposed to be like the new Death Shadow. That didn't really pan out. Uh, however, uh, yeah, this this is not going to cost as much as you would think. You play some fetches, some shocks, do that a few turns, burn a few life with snuff out, and uh, yeah, you're going to get down, you get down to seven or eight life, and you can cast this thing for double black. No problem. Easy peasy. David with the super chat. Thanks so much. Leyline of anything you want. That's right, actually. Leyline of. Let's just go with Sanctity. <laughs> How often? I mean, it, it's not impossible to cast these cards. I mean, it does happen. 
but you know, it's a white, white, two generic enchantment. However, if it's in your opening hand, you put it straight into play. This one gives you hex proof. There's ones that give you flash, exile the, your opponent's graveyard, things that don't make everything legendary. Um, yeah, all the lay, all the ley lines. So anyway, well, <laughs> you didn't specify a, specify a ley line, so I'll just go with ley line of sanctity. But yeah, if you have four mana, you'll just cast this. But why pay four mana when you can play an absolute fat zero? Erland with Big Game Hunter. I don't even know what that is. Big Game Hunter, black, black, one generic for a 1-1 one, one human rebel assassin. When it enters the battlefield, destroy target creature with power four or greater. It can't be regenerated. Ah, the madness cost. It's not, oh, to be honest, this is not that expensive. Three mana? I don't know, maybe. But anyway, so if you can discard this through like Faithless Looting, some sort of rummaging effect, uh, you can pay a black as you, if you discard this card, if you discard this card, discard it into exile when you do, cast it for its madness cost or put it into your graveyard. Wait, you guys cast Ley Lines? Some people do. Some people who play the game till turn four. Yeah, it happens. Believe it or not, Blue Bomber. Double dip with Hogak. You got, yeah, Hogak nails everything. You know, with Hogak, you got the Convoke, you got the Delve. What else should I put? They should have put Madness on it. I mean, that was just like the icing on the cake that they sort of missed here. So, <laughs> yeah, it's Golgari, Golgari, five generic mana. Now, weirdly enough, you're not allowed to spend mana to cast this spell. No, 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 no. So it's a bit odd that you even have a casting cost on the on it in the first place But you do have convoke and delve so you can use a combination of the two in order to get this thing into play You can cast Hogak from your graveyard. That is just This card is all whirl uh, police siren whirling sounds. And it's got trample. That's fantastic an 8-8 trampler Good luck chump blocking this card could get played by turn two easily. You just play like a looting spell turn two. Play, uh, I think you needed to have that zombie though. I don't remember what it's called. The one black one one. Mill three cards from your deck into your uh, library. Then just another random card and it's just good enough. It all worked. Yeah, this card was so format warping. Funny enough, it's not really that big. It's not that big of a deal in Legacy. I've played against this in Legacy. It's just, it's just, it's just a card really. All right, well, we got um, Pedgeman with Salvage Titan. What are we salvaging with the Salvage Titan? Oh, we got a black, black, four generic, six, four golem. You may sacrifice three artifact spells. Then rather than pay the spell's mana cost, you got a deal. That's a deal I'll take. Exile three artifact cards from your graveyard. Uh, return Salvage Titan from your graveyard to your hand. So, I mean... You just need artifacts in play. You don't even need six mana. Who has six mana these days? But artifacts we have plenty of. Salvage Titan. So what is it? Basically, it's just a sack three artifact get a six four golem in play. I can't remember, why is this card so important? You can sack three artifacts, exile three artifacts from your graveyard, return it to your hand. This is like such an important combo piece in so many decks. I just don't remember. Oh, Meek with uh, Blasphemous Act for us EDH casuals. It saw standard play. Hey, it saw us playing standard. If they played Boros Reckoner with this, so they could shoot the opponent for 13 damage. Okay, we got a red eight sorcery, but it costs one less to cast for each creature on the battlefield. So usually it's gonna cost one. If you're an ED8, if, if you're in an EDH game, this is not gonna be that expensive. Blasphemous Ag deals 13 damage to each creature and each player. Sorry, no, not each creature. So each each creature. Sorry, I forgot. Bla you need the Boros Reckoner. You need the Boros Reckoner. Boros Reckoner is, is a creature that says uh, if it takes damage, you can deal the damage to a player. Uh, was Scornful Egotist made for this? I, okay, I guess so. You know, that's not a lie. We got a blue seven generic wizard. It's a one one. Eight, but eight mana. What the hell? Uh, however, you can pay three mana just to turn it into a two two creature. It's literally better that way. I mean, unless you need the wizard subtype for something. For, for something, but outside of that, yeah, Scornful Egotist is uh, where it's at. Uh, Graham with, has Force of Will ever been hard cast by anyone? Oh, absolutely. 
it's really hard though. The game has to go super long. Uh, yeah, it's five mana. I would say in Legacy, it doesn't happen too often, but it happens. Blue, blue, three generic instant. You may pay a life and exile a blue card from your hand rather than pay this spell's mana cost. Counter target spell. You know what? I'm going to interject with one of my favorite cards. It sucks in Commander, though. Misdirection. Where's the OG art? It's such a weird art. Look, the heads are floating and doing a, doing a switcheroo around here. But it's blue, blue, three generic. Uh, target spell with a single target targets another target instead. Uh, basically, you're changing the target of a spell that only targets one thing. However, you can remove a blue card in your hand from the game instead of paying Misdirection's mana cost. One of my favorite cards in the game. Easily. Um, does it count if it's useful outside of being cast, like Golgari Grave Troll? I'll allow it. I will allow it. Golgari Grave Troll. Yeah, this is a card that costs five mana, but <laughs> you're never casting it though. Like it just, it's, I, I've seen maybe twice in my life someone cast a Golgari Grave Troll against me. There's a battlefield with a counter, plus one plus one counter on it for each creature card in your graveyard. It does have stats. It does things in combat. You can even pay one, remove a counter from this thing to regenerate the Golgari Grave Troll. The 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 most important stat, however, is Dredge Six. That's it. It's the most important thing. <laughs> So really, so it says five mana, but really it costs zero. It's cost zero and basically draw draw six. That's broken. That's why it's like banned and actually it's only banned in modern and restricted in vintage. That's that's wild. Ricardo always love misdirection, like turn back opponents to rock. That's right. So you lose two cards anyway, but you get to choose which two you lose, and then your opponent will lose two two more cards in addition to the Turok that they just spent. Uh, what else do we got here? D uh, <laughs> all hail the great, the great scornful, the scornful ego test. Yeah, it's the scornful ego test. Thank you very much, David. Blake with the super chat. Uh, Zagras thief of heartbeats. Zagras. Thief. Not familiar. All right, we got a red, black, four generic, four, four vampire rogue. But it's going to cost one less to cast for each creature in your party. That is the most awkward mechanic, like, probably ever. Like, hold on. So what is it in your party? It was like, uh, it was, was it rebel? Rebel, wizard, cleric, something else. Which was a rogue. No, so yeah, no, it was ro it was rogue or something. Rogue, wizard, cleric, uh, something else. Can't remember really. But it's like, it's such a situational. Anyway, if you have all four cards of your party, this is only gonna cost a red and a black. What does what does it even do? Flying death touch haste. Other creatures you control have death touch. And whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a planeswalker, destroy that planeswalker. Pretty sweet. So it was Rogue, Cleric, Warrior, and Wizard. That's right. Warrior. It shows how much party is used. It's a party! But it's just so awkward to like try to fit in four random... They are pretty four random creature types. Maybe Rogues and Wizards sometimes mingle, but I don't think the rest of them do. Like, I don't think Clerics are hanging out with the Warriors or the Wizards. Unless it's for the lore or something. Okay, let's, um, Terminus. Oops, this wasn't a super chat. But anyway, cat, I'll give it to you anyway. <laughs> Terminus. Uh, yeah, white, white, four generic. Sorcery, put all creatures on the bottom of their owner's library. But, oh, it's a miracle. It was on top of my deck. I get to pay only a single white mana, and I buried everything. Terminus players, very proud of themselves. I remember one opponent was like they stack Terminus on top of their deck, you know, with some cards. And then like at their upkeep, oh, it's a miracle. Yeah, yeah, right, exactly. It wasn't really a miracle. You had fate over it. Uh what do we have next? We got yo little Ted with Vanquish the Horde. Vanquish. Alright, we got uh white white, six generic. Sorcery, the spell costs one less to cast for each creature on the battlefield. Destroy all creatures! 
blow them all up. So this is like the White Blasphemous Act, if I understand correctly. It's basically the White Blasphemous Act. Yep, there's a bunch of stuff on the battlefield. You just... Too white! Blow it. Probably the most... This might be the most powerful uh, removal uh, sweeper in EDH. How much does it cost? It costs three dollars? Okay, maybe I'm wrong. This card is a godsend. Scornful Egotist is good for pod slash neoform tricks, I guess. No, Sc Scornful Egotist is good for a troll on this show. And Party is an RPG stuff. Yeah, I know. It was very flavorful, but not very strategic. Uh, I saw a pretty good one here. Hold on, who had the... The Palincron? Ricardo had Palincron. Palincron! Now, in some sense, this is going to be very expensive. However, it's blue, blue, five generic. Seven mana total. For a four, five flower, flyer. But when it enters the battlefield, you get a rebate. Alright, so if you buy one, you get one free. Uh, enters the battlefield, untap up to seven lands. So you really didn't pay anything for it. But you do have to pay something up front. Alright, you gotta pay the seven mana. Wizards, Wizards is like, pay the seven mana up front, please. We need some seven mana. But you're gonna get it back. Uh, next we got Blake. Uh, Warrior, Wizard, Rogue, Cleric. I used it as a <laughs> Changeling Commander. Oh yeah, that's right. So you could use, so you use a Changeling Commander. Uh, like what? Uh, I can't think of that, that Aura Form thing. Morophon. Mora. Maybe I'm not gonna find it. I'm being stupid here. But anyway, there is, yeah, there's a change in commander, a commander, and I guess it's all creature types, so you get everything. David with a super chat, Blasphemous Act. We did that one, but I'll look at it again for more, for you. The sweeper of all, this is, this is a sweeper competing with that mono white sweeper. It costs one red instead of double white. You can get as cheap as that. GWJ, thank you very much for the super chat. Talarian Terror. This card is like breaking, uh, if I understand correctly, this card is breaking Popper right now. It's like the go-to card in a lot of Delver deck, or like I think there's like a blue-black Delver deck, or a blue-black deck, tempo E deck. Okay, blue six generic for a 5-5, five five, but it's got, it doesn't have Delve. It's something slightly different. The spell costs one less to cast for each instant and sorcery card in your graveyard. So as you fill your uh, graveyard with ponders, brainstorms, fatal pushes, um, well, you know, the whole kit and caboodle, uh, eventually you're gonna get it down to a point where you can only, ca where you can cast it for one mana. It's got ward too! I think that's broken. I don't think ward should be, actually to be honest, I wish they give out more ward too. Ward one just doesn't do it, in my opinion. It just, it doesn't do it. Blake, Galta. Any Galta fans out there? 12 mana! No, no, not today. This because this spell costs X less to cast, where X is the total power of your creature total power of creatures you control. It's got trample. It's a 12-12 creature. The earth walks strongest of all. That is an AI generated uh, flavor text. That makes no sense to me. The earth walks strongest of all. Now we know why, the, like, this, the, the flavor texts from uh, the AI-generated cards are so bizarre and, frankly, nonsensical, because some of the real English ones are. Uh, okay, what do we got next? We have... Sky! Sky Neo. Has Mikkelsen's Golem been brought up? Nope. Mikkelsen's Golem! Aha! 11, 11 mana! Uh, artifact creature spells you play have affinity for artifacts. Oh, that's pretty crazy. And it also has affinity for artifacts. So, for as many artifacts you have on the battlefield, this card is going to cost one less. And then once it's on the battlefield, all artifact spells. I mean, basic, if you can get this thing in play, you're basically playing your artifacts for free. He looks so sad. With this gaping uh, hole in his mouth. What's going on here? Why was I designed to feel pain? But anyway. We got Fat Boy Vlogs. Uh, Zakama, Primal Calamity. Zakama. 
All right, we got a uh, white, green, red, six generic for a nine-nine creature. How does it work? Vigilance, reach, trample. Ah, when Zakama Primal Calamity enters the battlefield, if you cast it, means no cheat sees, untap all lands you control. You might even net some mana out of this. You got Guy's Cradle in your deck. Tap that Guy's Cradle for a bunch, of, float a bunch of mana. Zakama, untap your Guy's Cradle. Or even uh, maybe uh, Nykthos, Shrine to Nyx. It's all possible. If Mikosynth Golem was legendary, it would be stupidly OP commander. Oh my goodness! Yeah, that's right. That would be a funny. That would be a funny commander. Just put into play for almost nothing. Toilet Duck does, for example, Emrakul count as expensive, but not really. If anyone using it to cheat it out, nope. I will. I will say a nope to that. It's gonna. It's, that's a nope from me, dog. Renin with Avatar. Whoa. Oh, we're going back. We're going. We're going back to like. What is this called? What was the original? Prophecy! That's what it was. When the cards were as bad as they could possibly be printed. Black, black, six generic. This probably is one of the worst sets ever in like modern day magic beyond the reserve list era. Okay, black, black, six generic. It's a six, five creature. However, if there are 10 or more creature cards total in old graveyards, Avatar of Woe, hosts, Avatar of Woe costs six less to play. Avatar of Woe can't be blocked except by artifact creatures and or black creatures. And also you can just tap and destroy creatures. It's Royal Assassin! So it's uh, today's version of Royal Assassin. The Affinity Everything Commander deck? Yeah. That'd be brutal. I would love to play it though. Wouldn't it be fun? Affinity is a fun mechanic to be playing with, but not against. No. No good. Uh, King Ginger with a super chat. Animar makes Eldrazi cost less. Oops, I got the wrong card. Soul of Elementals. Okay, so we red, blue, green for a 1-1. One, one. Pro white, pro black. If you cast a creature spell, put a counter on Animar, Soul of Elementals. Creature spells you cast cost one less to cast for each counter on Animar. I guess eventually, yes, it would. However, uh, this does, this card specifically doesn't cost that much, um, and yeah, the card the card itself uh, doesn't really fit the title. But thank you very much for the super chat, anyway. Crow card games, thank you very much. Jaya's immolating. Jaya's. I'm not familiar with this card. Okay, we got a red red X legendary sorcery. And cast legendary sorcery only if you control a legendary creature or a planeswalker. I thought you could have an artifact too. Maybe that's a historic spell. Okay, uh, Jai's Im Immolating Inferno deals X damage to each of up to three targets. Let me cast a legendary sorcery only if you control a legend. I don't know how this looks expensive, but it's actually cheap. It deals X damage to each of up to three targets. Up to! You're also limited to what, like, what you can torch down. I don't think this counts, to be honest. Yeah, this ain't chi this ain't it, Chief. Uh, what is this from Michael? Stratodon and Draco. Oh, are these two separate ones? Okay, let's look at the Stratodon. Oh, it's a big chonker. Oh, we look at a big elephant. It's like uh, actually. It looks like that thing from Star Wars. What's it called? From uh, The Empire Strikes Back. The I don't remember what they're called. You know, in the in the battle, the Arc Antarctica world, they had those big things. The only difference is this: it has a tusk for no reason whatsoever. It's just there for flavor, I guess. Anyway, ten mana, five five. Stratodon costs one less to play for each basic land type among lands you control, and as trample. So uh, yeah, one. What's it called? Uh, one, triumph and a one Triumph and a Shock Land, and you're good to go. It'll cost a whole five mana instead. Yeah, five five with five trampled not, is not cheap. Hey, it's it's not as expensive as it looked. All right, you got a discount. Who doesn't like value? The, the ATATs, that's what I was talking about. The ATATs.
Come on, Google, you know what I'm talking about. There, there it is! It's Stratodon! And it has the tusks, actually. It has tusks. I said it didn't have tusks. It has tusks. You can see them right here. Unbelievable. Total ri that's... Uh, wizards, like, stole intellectual property here, as far as I'm concerned. Okay, uh, what do we got? Th uh, Thrust? How about Thrasta? Oh, yeah, Thrasta. Oh, boy. I was wrong about this card. I thought this... I thought a lot of people would play this card. This ended up seeing very little play outside of some very unique combo decks. Okay, we got a green, green, 10 generic, 7, 7 dinosaur. But it costs 3 less to cast for each other spell you've cast this turn. It's like a storm card. And it's got Trample and Haste. And Trample over Planeswalkers. And Thrasta Tempest Roar has Hexproof as long as it entered the battlefield this turn. We got a lot of Super Chats I gotta get through. Um, Spectral Maniac. How's your day so far? Torgar, um, my day is great. Torgar. Famine Incarnate. You don't say, is this a real card? From, oh, this is a game night promo? Okay, we got a black, black, six generic, 7-6 uh, avatar. As an, as an additional cost to cast this spell, you may sacrifice any number of creatures. And the spell costs two less to cast for each creature sacrificed this way. So what do we got? So it could be two mana. Uh, when Torgar, Famine Incarnate, enters the battlefield, up to one target player's life total becomes half their starting life total. Rounded down. Holy crap! You just nuked half my life! Commander, that's like 20 damage. Against life gain decks, that might be 50. Unbelievable. Blue Bomber! Oh, dreamy. The ever playful. Well, it's like a pet or something. Uh, we got blue, green, black, three generic for a 6 6 creature with trample. Whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, return target creature card with mutate from your graveyard to your hand. But it's not six mana, it's just four mana, because you could just mutate this on another creature. It's so actually, the, you know what, the mutate... Sadly, the mutate mechanic was just ridiculously complicated, but, like, the idea was there. I don't think it was a bad idea. It's great because Torgar even counters life gain decks. That's right. The low, low cost of sacking your board, basically. All right, what do we got next? We got um, Mason. Thanks so much for the super chat. My friend ate a foil scornful egotist. New, new. Oh, yeah, the new Emrakul. <sighs> oh, so many Emrakul cards. The Promised End. Yeah, this actually is not that hard to cast. So it's 13 generic mana for a 13, 13. They did that on purpose. They're fixing the Grizzlebrand thing. They should have made Grizzlebrand Ulse. I think all sevens are all, yeah, all sevens. Emrakul, the promised end, it costs one less to cast for each creature card type among cards in your graveyard. When you cast Emrakul, you gain control of target opponent during that player's next turn. After that turn, that player takes an extra turn. It's got flying tra- flying, I don't even know why it flies. Flying trample and protection from instance. An enigma as vexing as life itself. To haul in the Hydra, really? John with Kah Kaholni Hydra. I don't remember what Kaholni Hydra does. Okay, it's... God, I might miscount this. Green, 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 green. All right, eight green for an 8-8 eight, eight creature. But it costs a green less to cast for each green creature you control. Trample. And it's popular. Like, I don't know. Do people want this for the flavor? It's like $13. In reality, this, this card really doesn't do anything. It's literally just, it's sort of a vanilla creature, to be honest. Yeah, it's all green. Benjamin says, dude, mutate is broken. You can mutate on Gideon when he is a creature, so he stops being a planeswalker, but still has planeswalker abilities. It becomes extremely weird sometimes. I didn't even know that. That is really bizarre. Combo with Nykthos. Oh! Unlikely combos you would never have seen. That's right. Yeah, you get that in play now, Nykthos. But if you got this in play for nothing, doesn't your Nykthos... Isn't your Nykthos doing pretty well? This is effectively affinity for green mana symbols. Whatever. 
All right, we're going to look at more wonderful uh, cards that look expensive but are really cheap. But we got to thank our sponsors today, FusionGamingOnline.com. As Lord of the Rings, Tales of Middle Earth are rolling out. Uh, you're going to want to get your singles. You know where to get them from. If you want to support the channel, you get them from FusionGamingOnline.com because I told you so. And don't forget to use coupon code NIKACHU to get 5% off all your purchases. That's the main way to support the channel. We're also going to thank Manitraders, the premier place for renting magic cards online. Your ability to play any deck, any format, any time you want. And when those Lord of the Rings cards come out, you're going to build a new deck entirely. Are you going to try to playtest all the weird new cards in your current deck? You'll find the right configuration when you're renting with Manitraders. You can support the channel using my Manitraders link in the description below. Or save 10% off your first two months using coupon code NIKACHU. Underscore PG2. Mind you, um... You could probably also play all the new busted decks that might come out. There's a lot of interesting things coming in that Lord of the Rings thing, I'm telling you what. We'll eventually look at all those cards. Alright, what do we got next? Uh, super chat, super chats. David with the Great Henge. Also, party only counts one creature type at a time. You can't have a full party, it's only Morophon. What? It's not, uh, you can't have a f Oh, I was thinking of Morphon. That's what I was thinking of. Party only counts one creature type at a time. So I need to have like three, four changelings out. And we looked at Great Henge. And it is great. For X is the greatest power among creatures you control. Surprised? I'm not surprised about anything. This card is just busted as hell. I'm glad that it's really just like a one over two of in a whole lot of decks. Blake Mamba. The Deadly Rollick. Deadly it is. Black 3 generic instant. If you control a commander, you may cast this spell without paying its mana cost. Exile target creature. That's broken. You you exiling it? Since when did black exile stuff? I don't know. Maybe they did? I thought they only destroy things. Control a commander. And that's a wicked ability. So it's like snuff out, except you're not actually playing. You're not actually paying anything. Well, speaking of about four mana, like basically destroy creature spells. Yeah, snuff out. Black 3 generic. If you control a swamp, it's going to cost 4 life instead of paying its mana cost. Hey, you commander players, you have a bunch of life. You know what they say, life total, life is a resource, use it. Uh, and you destroy target non-black creature, it can't be regenerated. So you can destroy everything except the black creatures. Look, they got Liliana on the front here. Alright, next up we've got Sky Neo! Barricade Breaker. Really good in artifact deck and possibly get it out turn. What when is it turn two? Oh, absolutely. Okay, seven mana for a seven five juggernaut with improvise. Your artifacts can help cast the spell. Each artifact you tap after you're done activating mana abilities cost one. So uh it's convoke. It's convoke for artifacts. Barricade breaker attacks each combat if able. Why do juggernauts have that ability? And they can't block. There's no blocking on this thing. I've seen a lot of crappier things block before. You just turn it around and let it ram up the butt, ram up its butt. And the last we got crow. Oh, we got crow card games here. I guess X spells don't count, so Prime Evil Protector. Oh yeah, because the X spell you have to pay for the X spell, right? Prime Evil Protector. I've never heard of this card. Okay, so it's 11 mana for a 10-10. Spell costs one less to cast for each creature your opponent controls. And when when Primeval Protector enters the battlefield, put a counter on each other creature you control. So your opponent has a lot of stuff in play. You just plop this thing down for one mana. Put a counter on each other creature you control. Oh, and you can also buff up your creatures. Oh, that's pretty cute. Man, wild cards we have in this game. Are you looking for, If you're all looking for big, chonky creatures to have in your deck, but don't actually cost that much mana, this is the show for you. All right, Rez, Rezoi. Um, back to the main page. We got Sprout back. Trudge. I don't even know what a trudge is. Green, green, seven generic for a nine, seven. Fungus beast. The spell costs X less to cast, where X is the amount of life you gained this turn. Uh, trample at the beginning of your end step. If you gain life this turn, you may cast Sprout back Trudge from your graveyard. That's not bad. That that Zyber's with me. That's also a very unique card. 
you know, there's a whole bunch, you know, there's the affinity cards, Convoke, Improvise, but this one, you gain life, you get to cast for free. You also cast from your graveyard. Only a commander card. I wonder if it would see play in modern. Is that possible? I don't know. I don't know. Does hatred count if it's considered a resource? Uh, we are, I think we're count we're counting resources. What is this? Black, black, three generic, pay X life. Target creature gets plus X plus zero until end of turn. Nah, this, this one's a little different. You still gotta pay the five mana and there's no way to reduce it. You can't pay, you can't play this for free. You can't play, there's no, there's no other uh, effect on hatred that you could use. Woku, hey Nikachu, first time to catch you actually live by you and not rewatch the old stuff. I love the content, keep up the good work. Thank you so much, Woku. Uh, David Sampson, Blood for the Blood God. How's this work? Okay, we have red, black, black, a generic. There are gods in Warhammer? It seems very strange to me, such a mechanized uh, plane. The spell costs one less to cast for each creature that died this turn. Oh god! Discard your hand and then draw eight cards. Blood for the Blood God deals eight damage to each opponent. What the hell is going on here? This card's broken. Exile Blood for the you, Yeah, you better exile this card. Discard your hand, draw eight cards. It's a one-sided Wheel of Fortune and you dome everyone for eight? What the hell is going on here? Skulls for the Skull Throne. How did I never heard of this card? Well, it's, it's, it's only three, it's only three bucks. Anyway, okay, moving on. The emperor is like a god? Okay, got it. They got emperors over there. Uh, okay, we got King Jinder with uh, Gorax. Tomb Shell. Uh, big scary turtle. <laughs> yeah, it's like he woke, someone put a tomb in the sea or something and he just woke up. What's this thing doing on my back? Black, black, six generic. It's got it's a four four death toucher. Uh, whenever Gorex the tomb shell attacks or dies, choose a card at random. So at random, exiled with Gorex and put that card into its owner's hand. And uh, as an additional cost to cast this spell, you may exile any number of creature cards from your graveyard. Oh, this spell costs two less to cast for each creature card. For sorry, for each card exiled this way. Pretty neat stuff. Tax or dice, choose a card at random, exiled with Gorex, and put it into your hand. It's a pretty neat card. Let's go back to the old good stable. Oh, gush. Who's gushing for gush? Oh, this card's broken. It's a, it's a blue for generic. However, you may return two islands you control to, to their owner's hands rather than pay gush's mana cost. Draw two cards. So this was like the most... How do I put it? This this card basically cost you a land drop. Very often, if you played Gush, you're playing a deck that didn't have a whole lot of lands. Like you would have at most two lands in play. So you'd like float mana, Gush, put the two lands back in hand, replay a land, and you have like three mana right then and right there. So uh, yeah, it, Gush was... This is a card I don't know if I've ever seen anyone spend five mana on. Don't know if it's ever happened. Yeah, it day. well yeah, the last one it danger. Okay, hold on. We've got, uh, oh, you want Blastoise. Ah, uh, what is that? Cannoneer? The Kappa! Kappa Cannoneer. We got a blue, five generic, four, four, Turtle Warrior with Improvise. This card usually just costs nothing. Your artifacts can help cast the spell. Each artifact you tap after you're done activating mana abilities costs, uh, abilities pay, pays for one. It's got Ward 4! Nothing is gonna kill this thing! I have never seen anyone pay that ward. Whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under your control, put a counter, plus one plus one counter on Cap of Cannoneer, and it can't be blocked this turn. That card is absolutely broken. I'm very frustrated losing that card in Legacy. Ah, then they always have it. They always have that damn stupid Blastoise card. All right, next uh, we got some super chats. We got we got fire here with Mana Geyser. Mana Geyser. Okay, we're red, red, three generic. Sorcery. Add a red for each tapped land your opponents control. So it's like 
Oh yeah, that's true. True story. So it looks like a lot of mana, but you're probably going to net like way more mana, especially if you have three opponents. Like what are you going to get? Like 10? So if you have five, you so yeah, you probably are going to get like around 15-ish, somewhere between 12 and 15 or more if your opponent's playing some sort of ramp deck. You got you got it, mana geyser. Blake, Treachery has gained me gained me mana. <laughs> Yeah, it does that. You know, if you've got like a Nykthos in play and you, uh, I don't know, get eight mana, play Treachery, blue, blue, three generic. You control the enchanted, you control enchanted creature, but when it comes to play, you untap up to five lands. So untap your Nykthos, untap, I don't know, maybe uh, Guy's Cradle if you got it in play, and you net, you net mana. Oh, we did the, we did the white Blasphemous Act thingy. We did the blice, the the white one. Oh, Elder Deep Fiend. This has seen a lot of play in competitive decks, but it, it's it's a little awkward. It's a little clunky, but it is pretty powerful if you get it going. It's eight mana for a five, six flasher. However, it's got a merge for a blue, blue, five generic, which again looks expensive, but just listen. Uh, you may cast the spell by sacrificing a creature and paying the emerge cost reduced by that creature's converted mana cost. So if you sack, say, a five mana creature, you can just pay a blue blue and put your Elder Deep Fiend in play. And also Elder Deep Fiends can comp with other Elder Deep Fiends. And it's really good because when you cast the spell, tap up to four target permanents. You can tap maybe their biggest creature, you tap down their lands. It's a really busted spell. Really busted. Uh, super chats. Thank you so much for your super chats today, people. Um, Burning Paper Sun, City on Fire. We got red, 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 five generic. Convoke, enchantment. Convoke, enchantment. If a source you control would deal damage to a permanent or player, it deals triple that damage instead. Oh my goodness. So my lightning bolts now deal nine, is what you're telling me. How to make lightning bolt a one-shot kill. You get your, You just put the whole city on fire. But pretty reasonable to cast, you know. Um, just get three, three red permanents. And convoke it in play. Blue. <laughs> I totally forgot about this one. Burning paper sun with burning tree emissary. Burning tree. It's the ultimate free card. Yeah, it's a it's a gruel gruel for a two two, and when it airs a battlefield, you get you get a green and a red. So you pay pay nothing for this. I think, like, I think some people were calling for this card to be banned in standard at the time. Because if you had a lot of Burning Tree Emissaries and you were on the play, it was like, it was like affinity for humans. It was humans' affinity. And they have another one that's like this. I don't remember what it's called, though. Uh, I think it's an incubator or something. King Ginger, thanks so much for the super chat. Universal Surveillance. Blue, 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 X, sorcery, improvise, draw X cards. Ooh, that's delicious. I love that idea. Oh, uh, it's sorcery. Oh, no. Uh. I still like the card. I like the idea of just tapping all my useless artifacts. So tap, tap everything. Basically, refill the hand. Welcome, Ari. I appreciate it. Uh, all right. Okay, let's try to get back to... Let's get... Am I muted? I'm not muted. Everyone else, if, if I've been muted for 43 minutes, that'd be wild. That'd be the first time. Uh, Alright, we got Tyler with Empty the Pits. Let's try to give attention to people who, who, even the people who don't super chat. Because you know what? You guys still support the channel as well. Alright, Black, 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 XX, Instant with Delve. Uh, put X, 2-2, two, two Black, Zombie Creature Tokens onto the battlefield. Tap. So you can, instead of paying for the X spell, you can just delve it away. This is actually really close to that hatred card, isn't it? You still gotta pay the black, black, black. But you know what? I think this is a little bit more acceptable. Somehow this feels like you are getting a discount, because you you have to pay this X. Like paying life is very it's not it's, it's not like there's an alt there was there's an alternate way of paying with this. You can pay with mana or you can pay with something else. Okay, so I accept this one. I like it. Uh, Phyrexian Dreadnought. Oh, God. Does this count? It's one mana! 
It's literally one mana, Trample. When it comes to play, sack any number of creatures with total power 12 or more Berry, Phyrexian, Dreadnought. I think this is disqualified. It doesn't cost more mana at all. Like, you ba you have to cheat it in play. You know, it's, it's, a, che it's a cheatsy card. It's, it's supposed to be cheated. All right, let's move back to the Super Chats. Uh... Edgar Barkov doesn't need to be in play. That's right! I got like a comment in my comment section about our Edgar Markov that uh, Wizards R&D actually thought that this was a mistake. They were trying to buff up vampires and like it just buffed up way too much. So black, white, red, three generic for a 4-4 four, four creature. First strike haste. Honestly, none of this matters. It's all a bunch of garbage. In, uh, the most important thing is eminence. Whenever you cast another vampire spell, if Edgar Markov is in the command zone or on the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one black vampire creature token. First strike and haste. Oh yeah, forget the rest of it. I'm starting to read the card again. It's pointless. You are not going to want this card to leave the command zone. You want it in the command zone. It's more powerful that way. That way you play like any vampire spells. You just like spew a bunch of stupid 1-1 one, one black vampires onto the battlefield. Ah, <sighs> Abzo with Dargo. Who are you? Who's Dargo? Red 6 generic for a 7-5. It's a giant pirate. It's probably the bodyguard to the loot. As an additional cost to cast this spell, you may sack any number of artifacts and or creatures, and the spell costs two less to cast for each permanent sacrifice this way, and two less to cast for each other artifact or creature you sack this turn. It's got Trample and Partner. Hey, let's, let's go, partner. Partner with a pirate. It'd be very flavorful. Pedgeman says, Eminence is a game design mistake because you can't interact with it. I know! It's just... What a stupid crap thing. Imagine starting the game with a free emblem. Exactly! Ex that is exactly what it is. But the downside is that, like, you only get it while it's in the command zone. But why would you want to leave? There's no reason to leave. Yup, Eminence is broken. No way to counter or play against it. How big must that lobster be? I don't know, pretty big. It's big hand. Big hands here. Okay, moving on. We've got Crocor with Paragon Drake. Thank you so much, Crocor Games. I didn't I didn't take notice. Are you like a you you have you're called Crocor Games. Do you, are you a YouTuber of some sort? Do you stream? I should go check out your channel. Blue, four generic for a 2-3 flyer, and is a battlefield untapped to up to five lands. So it doesn't cost five mana, it's free. You got that rebate on you. Yo, little Ted with Draco. The Draco. I think the I think you're referring to the OG. This card is wild. 16 mana for a 9-9. Nine, nine. It's just a 9-9 nine, nine flyer. I guess the only reason you'd have this in your deck is if you're like, I don't know, a dragon aficionado or something. I wonder what the foil on this is. It's probably really expensive. Um, anyway, it's going to cost two less to cast for each basic land type among lands you control. So if you've got... It, all you need is a Triome and a Shock Land. You have all five types, and it costs six mana instead of 16. Did we even the score Great Synergy with New Heliod? Even the score? What's even the score? Even the score, we got blue, 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 X, instant. This spell costs blue, 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 less to cast if an opponent has drawn four more cards this turn. Ah, bit of a trap card. You get to draw X cards yourself. So, yeah, your opponent draws a bunch of cards. You know what? We're going to even the score over here. And uh, how does this combo with Heliod? I don't know what the new, maybe I don't know what the new Heliod is. I thought Heliod is, oh no, Heliod is not dead. Thinking of uh, the White Planeswalker. Gideon. Yeah, unique ability. Instead of the X costing less, it's the blue, blue, blue cost costing less. <sighs> Waste is a basic type, so you can have six. Can you? For each basic land type. You know what? I think you're right. I think we could get this thing down to four. Yeah, I think you're right, Blake. I just never thought about it that way. Waste is not a type, even though it is basic. Okay. 
like I intuitively like I've never seen anyone use waste to reduce the cost of something so I want to say no but like okay waste has no type let's look at we're gonna we're gonna look it up where is the waste the waste there it is just say, oh yeah there we go it has basic land nothing it's a void it's empty oh my god I got it I got a sound effect for this yeah, wastes are wastes, not basic. Oh no, they're basic! They're basic, but they don't have any land type. Uh, Alright, next up we've got King Ginger. Thank you so much for your super chats. Does March of Other Will League light count? No. Oh, oh, actually, yes! Yes, it is, because it does have, it does have one other... I forgot, yeah. Okay, so it's a white axe. Um, you exile target artifact creature and enchant with mana value X or less. However, uh, as an additional cost to cast this spell, you can exile any number of white cards from your hand, and this spell costs two less to cast for each card exiled this way. This absolutely counts. So you can just dump a bunch of white cards, and this thing can just cost one one white mana, and you exile something. Now, this one doesn't count. Tarmogoyf, it's literally two mana. There's really nothing to this card. It's not even expensive. It's not, it's not expensive, and it gets got no discount. This is doesn't work at all. But thanks for the super chat. I really appreciate it. We did salvage Titan already. Did we do sell Chandra's Incinerator though? It's really interesting. Now that we've done old like the easy ones, now we're getting to the. So now that we've done all the obvious ones, now we're digging into the sweet unknown tech here. Okay, we got red 5 generic for a 6-6 six, six elemental, but the spell costs X less to cast, where X is the total amount of non-combat damage dealt to your opponent this turn. Anyone who played the- it's not- wasn't- didn't end up being a very good card in burn, but anyone who played this against me in burn just absolutely wrecked me. Because I'm a creature-based deck. It has trample, so chump blocking sucks. And whenever a source you control deals non-combat damage to an opponent, so if you just bolt me, Chandra's Incinerate deals that much damage to target creature or planeswalker that player controls. This absolutely obliterated me in a disgusting way. LOL, Ted. Oh, probably talking about how the price tag used to be expensive, but it isn't anymore. Oh, for Tarmogoyf? Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, cards that used to be expensive, but not. No, we're talking about cards that are, like, you know, mana expensive, but, but are not. Yeah, that's funny. Debatra with discontinuity. Discontinuity. So we got blue, blue, three generic. Uh, as long as it's your... Uh, you end the turn. The turn is ended. As long as you cast this spell, this spell costs blue, blue, two less to cast. So you get a little bit of a discount if it's your turn. That's how, how it how it work. Skynio, thanks so much for your super chat. The first liver. Is there a discount here? Uh, Wooberg for a 7-7 seven, seven with Cascade. You spell Sliver spells you cast have Cascade. So unfortunately, it, just, it does not cost less. It costs 5 mana and there's no way to reduce it. And that's it. You do get a lot of value for that 5 mana. But it actually doesn't. You can't make it cost too le uh, any less than it already does. Torborg is like, I just joined. I thought that was the, the name of the show. But actually, yeah, we are. Uh, after you see a few of them, you understand. You, you know what's going on. Uh, what's the Great Whale? I think I saw that a few times. Great Whale! Oh, it's it's Willy. Actually, it's not Willy. And it looks like a dinosaur. Okay, whatever. Blue 5 generic for a 5-5. Five five. Comes to play untap up to 7 lands. This is on the reserve list. That's wild. As a great whale dies, it flips onto its back, and so an island is born. That's disgusting. That's absolutely gross. Flips on its back, and an island is born. It actually is good. That's more like it's gonna rot and decay, and there's just a bunch of pigeons and seagulls eating off that island until it's all gone. Did we do Echo of Eons yet? We didn't. That's true. Oh, the flashback cost. Blue, blue, four generic, which no one casts for this. Uh, each player shuffles their hand and graveyard into their library and draws seven cards. So it's Time Twister. But we can actually play Time Twister for its Time Twister cost with the flashback of a blue and two generic. Yeah, we did uh, Draco. Yeah, Corpse Island. Disgusting. 
Very, 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 very disgusting. King Ginger with another super chat. I did really appreciate it, King Ginger. Demo Lich. Did they errata this thing for um, historic? I'm not even gonna read it, but whatever. Okay, so the real one is blue, blue it's quadruple blue for a 4-3. The spell costs a blue less to cast for each instant or sorcery spell you've cast this turn. You could spend no mana on this thing. If you play, if you spent, if you played enough instants and sorceries, you just plop this thing onto the battlefield. And when it attacks, exile one target uh, instant or sorcery card from your graveyard, copy it, you may cast the copy. Surprise, this doesn't seem more competitive play. It looks like exactly what, it's like, I want to say, and you can cast Demolich from your graveyard by exiling four instant and sorcery cards from your graveyard in addition to it paying its other cost. This is like Dreadhorde Arcanist, which got banned in uh, Legacy. This is like, it's a little bit of Hogak to it. This is, it's a lot of things. I guess the one thing it doesn't have is some sort of evasion or trample or something. It's just a regular 4-3 creature. It's like Vengevine uh, power level. <sighs> Bardastico uh, with Sprouting Trudge. Ooh, what is this called? It's called Trudge? Sprouting. Oh, sp sorry. It's Sprout Back. Sprout. Sprout back. The Sprout back truck. Oh, we looked at this one. Yeah, this is a great one. Gain life and you actually, it could come into play from your graveyard. Free awesome card. Yeah, King Ginger paying you could choose Bill Hard. Oh yeah, absolutely. You all pay my bills hard. And you know, the, I mean, the super chats help even more, but I mean, you've so much as just watch these streams, you're paying my bills. Embry Lurker, Lurker of the Lock. It's, honestly, it's not even that expensive. But to be honest, I think for three mana, no, no one would play this thing. But the fact that you can pay it for like one or two, that's where that's where the real value comes from. Three mana, one, two, Merfolk. Uh, Merfolk Wizard. But it costs one less to cast for each artifact you control. So if you're playing this in an artifact deck, if it's in an artifact deck, it's costing basically one mana and nothing else. Oh yeah, you can tap and you can play artifact cards from your graveyard. Pretty wild. Uh, mana Drain does not cost less mana. Oh, this is a good hollow one. Yeah, hollow one. Five generic mana for a 4-4. Four, four. That sucks. However, it costs two less to cast. Uh, it'll cost two less to cast for each card you've cycled or discarded this turn. So ideally, you're going to be paying either one mana or zero mana. Any sort of looting or rummaging, you're going to act. You're going to activate that discount. Discount activated. What is oh not of this world is a good one. One of those situational cards. Seven mana. Counter target spell or ability that targets a permanent you control. Don't touch this. None of this world costs seven less to cast if it targets a spell or ability that targets a creature you control with power seven or greater. Gotta be a little bit more on the chunky side, but it will work. Blake with anger. Oh no, so oh I was thinking you said uh hatred. Yeah, anger. Okay, so this this one does count. It's a blue three generic two two with haste. However, if it's in your graveyard and you control a mountain, creatures you control have haste. So it doesn't really cost four mana because you don't even want it in play. It's one of those cards you want some in some other zone. It's better there than over there. It's better. It's better there than on the battlefield. Blue hearts with invigorate. Who the hell played this for three mana? Control a forest rather than pay the spell's mana cost. You can have an opponent gain three life instead. Zero mana pump spell. Plus four, plus four. Why would you want that? Infect. In it's all the answer is always infect. Vengevine. In a way, we should get both of these before the show ends. We got Vengevine. It's four mana for a four three with haste. However, if you cast a spell, if it's a second creature spell you cast this turn, you may return Vengevine from your graveyard to the battlefield. And same thing with Arclight Phoenix. Abzo getting here with some staples. At the beginning of your combat, on it's a four mana three two creature, and it honestly, it does. Sometimes you can cast it for this four mana. Uh, if you cast three or more instant or sorcery spells this turn, return Arclight Phoenix from your graveyard to the battlefield. Nice, sweet, and clean. 
What, uh, let's try to get one more. Uh, this, you guys have so many. Where's Bolt Bend? Take a look at Bolt Bend for a second. Red 3 generic instant costs 3 less to cast if you control a creature with power 4 or greater. Oh, so it turns it, what is it? It turns into Lightning Bolt? Change the charge. Oh, it's one of the redirect spells. Uh, it's like, um, I don't remember the red one. Change the target of change the target of target spell or ability with a single target. Super duper! Thank you so much in the end coming in with the super chat. Are we doing cost reduction stuff today? Absolutely. Goreclaw. Anything that costs less, or oh, which one? Oh, I guess this one. A big bear! Oh, it's a big bear. What's with this name? Goreclaw Terror of Calcisma? Green three generic for a four three, but creature spells you cast with power four or greater cost two less to cast. Oh, but he does not actually get the discount. So he had to get the discount in some way. Whenever Goreclaw Terror of Calcisma attacks, each creature you control with power four or greater gets plus one plus one and gains trample until end of turn. I'm I'm super, I guess you are a super bear fan. Anyway, but it actually is disqualified. Did I miss any super chats? Uh we got Demolich, we got Anger, we got another Anger. You don't have to do it twice, Blake. Don't worry, I got I got I got you. Alright, so that's it for today. Oh, hold on, Blue Bomber coming in there, squeaking in at the end. Technically chromatic Ori. The show ends when the super chats end. Really? Seven mana? You may spend mana as though it were mana of any color. Add five. Oh yeah, that's true. Okay, so it really only costs two mana. Because you're going to get five mana the moment it enters the battlefield. Pay five, tap, draw a card for each color among permanents you control. Also a pretty sweet, sweet card in general. All right, that's it for today. Thank you very much for being here for Coffee and MTG. Remember, if you want to be part of the show, you got to be here Monday to Friday, 11 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time. Thank you very much for all your support. I really appreciate it. For everyone who watches, but the people who also is a member of YouTube, Patreon on Patreon, or you support with Super Chats. And most importantly, got to thank everyone who shows up in the morning with your suggestions. People like Erlen, King Ginger, Pedgeman, Blue Bomber, Tommy. We got Blue Heart, Blue Heart, ba per Burning Paper Sun, Tyler, Abzo, Skyneo, uh, Bardiska. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. Super Duper, Toilet Duck. What do we got? Uh, Eric. Can't forget about Eric. So as usual, my coffee crew, keep brewing up them coffees and we'll keep brewing up the magic. Take care of yourselves. And I will see you at the next cup. Take care. Bye-bye.